Hey guys, this is Ricardo with Watch With Us, and I have a special guest with us today, RT from Vortic Watches. How you doing, RT? You know, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for asking. Glad to be here. Um, I kind of wish we were here on, how can I say, better circumstances. Um, you're here taking care of something very serious and something which in many ways we kind of, kind of sucks for us because it's not getting the attention we believe it deserves. And you're kind of in a tough position right now with the situation that you're dealing with. If you could kind of let our viewers uh, give them a little background on what you're dealing with right now. Yeah, so um, trying to make a long story short, we, uh, Vortec Watch Company, was sued by this watch group, uh, more specifically the uh, subsidiary called Hamilton. Um, Hamilton Watch Company, like uh, somebody on a, a podcast I listened to earlier said, the, the Hamilton we all know and love, right? It's um, um, it's a large company, you know, and part of this watch group, and they protect their trademark. And so um, we, as, as you might know, Vortec takes pocket watches and turns them into wrist watches. One of the, what I call the great American watch companies that made those pocket watches is, was Hamilton. And so some of the watches we make um, or have made um, have the, the word Hamilton or the Hamilton trademark on the front um, mm -hmm. and the back, uh, really on the dial and the movement on the old pocket watch. Mm -hmm. And so Hamilton sued us over trademark infringement and counterfeiting. Um, and obviously I disagree with that uh, mm -hmm. statement. I, I don't believe I'm infringing or counterfeiting anything. Um, and we've been fighting it for almost five years now. Yeah. It, so that's it's, that's it. It's it's weird. I, I feel like since I've known you, you've been dealing with this this situation. For it's, sure. And I could only imagine as like a small business, uh, a business that you started having that in the back of your mind, like literally with everything that you're doing, that this is just just there. Um, yeah. Reason we're talking with you today is um, yesterday. Uh, finally, after so many years, you were able to actually testify in court. Yep. Um, and Swatch actually showed up this time. Yep. Because um, there have been some instances in the past where they were supposed to show up. They didn't show up. Um, they were given the option for a conference call. They didn't call. Yeah. A um, couple of things that have happened um, in the history of this litigation. Um, and I, I don't want to say I was lucky enough to be in the courtroom. Um, but I, I just it just so happens that everything kind of lined up and I was yeah. able to be there and able to listen to you kind of defend yourself. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, what were your thoughts on yesterday? Uh, yesterday, um, the official trial was, it went extremely well for, for me and, and for Vortec. We, um, we laid out the, the case as, as best we could and, and really, you know, when I was talking to my uh, attorneys, the the number one thing I wanted to, to do um, with yesterday was just make sure that the judge fully understood exactly what we do mm -hmm. and also the, the importance of her ruling. Yeah. Because if, I mean, I, I literally said this, if taking a Hamilton pocket watch and turning it into a wristwatch is illegal or wrong, mm -hmm. then that sets precedent, at least in my mind, for uh, taking a, an Elgin or a Waltham or an Illinois, taking any pocket watch, a Rolex pocket watch, let's say, and turning it into a wristwatch, um, that would then be wrong. Yeah. And, um, and so well, I think we were very successful in making sure that the judge understood not only we salvage and restore antique American pocket watches, turn them into wristwatches, like that fact, right? Mm -hmm. um, but also that it's bigger than just Hamilton. Yeah. And in many ways, I mean, we, we discussed this in the, in the last video we had with um, um, my partners, uh, John, and with Spanish Rob. Yep. Um, it expands larger than just the, the watch industry. Yeah. Because the, the fear and the, for many of us who are following this case is that this will now be pushed into other realms. Mm -hmm. So a classic example we've been using is if someone decides they want to restore an old Ford Mustang. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, if, the, if this may be a 60s model and you can't find parts um, and you either use new old stock parts, all of a sudden, if you go ahead and sell that car, if, if in many ways, if you lose this case, Ford could come along and say, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's scary. And, and if you go back into the watch realm, how many of us know people who mod Seikos? 
yeah. and eventually sell them. Yeah. If this sets precedent, all of a sudden now, that might go out the window. Seiko might come knocking and saying, oh, well, no, you can't sell that mod. Yeah. So it's a very scary situation for a lot of us who have been watching this, um, this case. I also wanted to ask you, I know you've kind of been representing the company, of course, you're the owner. Mm -hmm. How are things back at Vortic HQ? Yeah, I mean, thanks for asking that because um, when, when I sent an email to, to all of our customers um, the night before the trial, it was really just a, um, an FYI, if you see anything, uh, like I, I shared a few, like your video that you guys made mm -hmm. um, and, and a couple other news stories about it and I just said I, I want I want you as, as the customers to hear this from, from me, from Vortic, and not from you know somebody else on the internet. Um, and I, I tried to stick with the high levels. We hadn't been to trial yet, so I had to be a little careful on what I said. Mm -hmm. um, but um, a lot of the emails I got in response were um, were awesome. You know, in far as like very positive, very like go get them and like good luck and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But a few of them uh, were concerned for us. You know, and I think people are concerned for. Um, for me and, and the company I built and my team and um, I really appreciate that um, Long story short. Um, we had our best year ever last year uh, 2019 we we did extremely well um, We made profit as a company um, which is hard to do <laughs> you know as a, mm -hmm. as a small business and um, You know this the launch of this watch the military edition what went extremely well um, you know, we, we are doing as well as we ever have as a company. Um, and this lawsuit has definitely slowed down um, my, my ideas for growth and I really want to be growing faster. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously the lawsuit has cost us a lot of money that I wish I could have spent on marketing. Um, but we're doing awesome. Everything is fine. Um, all the watches we have in process for customers, like I should probably send another email and just make sure Everything's great, <laughs> you know, yeah. we'll be fine. Win or lose, we're still gonna be fine. Um, it's, it's really just, again, I'm, I'm trying to defend the right to take a pocket watch and turn it into a wristwatch. And I don't see any way, like you were saying, like John was saying, like Spanish Rob was saying on the last call, I don't see any way the judge could say that what we do is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's a way that we can make what we do better um, and, and we had some of those conversations, you know, throughout the last five years. Um, but, but I can't see a way that what we do is, is illegal, if that makes sense. Yeah. And you know what, just speaking towards uh, what I was able to see and able to hear um, at today's courtroom, and, and you could tell me how you feel, it pretty much seems like Hamilton was coming at you in terms of the quality of the watch um, coming at you in terms of a customer, uh, educated customer, wouldn't be able to tell the difference yeah. between your, what you do, which is, you know, the pocket watch conversion as compared to a modern day Hamilton watch. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like those were their sticking points. And I think you did a pretty good job of reiterating, no, the, clearly we have customers who send our stuff, send their stuff in. Um, we have our own models. You clearly kind of explain to them that no, this is we take old Hamilton pocket watches, we convert them into wrist watches, and this is kind of what we do. Um, but yeah, it, it's just it was just interesting just sitting there in the, in the courtroom and seeing that. Um, I wanted to also ask you, with and then you just mentioned it with everything going on, how how have you been able to? kind of plan ahead for the company with this still going on like yeah. you know, what are what are some things that you guys are thinking about yeah so um that's a fantastic question and it's hard um you know I, it's hard to be an entrepreneur in general um it's hard to run a business it's hard to grow a team um but you know i, I think we've been doing a really good job just kind of fighting through it and pushing through it and um i really um, for the sake of my team and, and the, the rest of, of the people that work with me, I've really tried to take on the burden of the lawsuit myself and, and I share as much as they want me to share and mm -hmm. obviously when they ask questions I tell them but I really, you know, I'm the one that's been talking to the attorneys, I'm the one that's been doing the settlement conferences, I'm the one obviously that uh, represented us in trial mm -hmm. um, and they're all back in my workshop making watches. Um, 
And if any of them are watching, thank you. I told them thank you before we left. Uh, thank you for uh, sticking it out with me because, like I said, it's been years. Um, and and I don't I don't physically make watches. <laughs> you know, I, I I get to run the company. That's that's mm -hmm. my um, that's my job is to to do all of this stuff. Um, and, and to answer your question, it's really um, it's hard sometimes, but I try to compartmentalize and mm -hmm. say, okay, today I'm focused, like obviously yesterday, my 100% focus was on the, the lawsuit, being present for trial, answering the judge's questions, answering um, their attorney's questions, Hamilton's attorney's questions, um, you know, all of that stuff. And, and, and today I, I spent the morning catching up on my emails, um, had over 100 very positive go get them type of emails. So again, thanks for that. Um, and, and this afternoon I get to do this kind of thing. I have a couple other podcast uh, interviews coming up. Um, and so, yeah, so yesterday was, was legal stuff. Today was emails and, and PR stuff. And um, tomorrow's a travel day. And then I, I'm going to see my family in Pennsylvania, um, you know, this weekend. And, and so, yeah, it's just, again, to try to answer your question, it's, it's compartmentalizing. It's trying to focus, okay, I got a few hours, I'm going to work on this. And then I got a few hours, I'm going to work on this. Um, and, and our plan for this year is, is really just to try to do exactly what we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, we decided that we're going to use 2020 to just become the best in the world at what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I think we already are. I mean, we're really one of the only ones, you know, to take a pocket watch and, take, and, and turn your wristwatch as like a core business model. Mm -hmm. um, but we can always get better. And so um, we're really doubling down on our manufacturing processes. and trying to bring more components in-house, um, trying to make more things ourselves. We're going to do a few more limited editions, like the military edition, um, because that was so successful. We want to do more things like that. And so uh, my business partner, Tyler, and the rest of the team, they're, they're working on all of that while I'm dealing with this. Okay. Um, what I also wanted to accomplish today, and you know, you speak towards it with so much passion, but I actually wanted our viewers to kind of get an idea of exactly what it is that um, RT and Fortig do. So we've brought along with us a, a vintage, uh, well, not vintage, a pocket watch, an mm -hmm. older pocket watch. Yep. Um, and we're just going to kind of show you guys what the process would be if you were to send that in um, to Vortic and how they would take care of your heirloom or take care of something that means a lot to you, something that's important. Yeah. Um, so let's go. So here we have a pocket watch. It's actually my own personal pocket watch. Um, it doesn't work. Uh, I've, since I've met RT, I think I've mentioned this pocket watch to him on numerous occasions, but it just so happens I actually have an opportunity to give it to him this time around. Yeah, here we are. Um, so he can have his guys take a look at it. But RT, kind of run us through the process. I send yeah. you the pocket watch and if you could tell me a little bit about it yeah. and kind of run me through what Vortic would do. For sure. Um, if, if it's okay, I'll take one step back and just share um, kind of what I did in trial yesterday for the judge. Sure. Um, we, we do three things as a company. Um, you can send us a, a pocket watch like this, whether it's a family heirloom or something you just found. Mm -hmm. um, you can send it to us and then we will convert it. Um, that's what we're going to talk about right now. I call that convert your watch or preserve your legacy. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can also go on our watch builder, which is an online customizer. You look at a bunch of pocket watches that we have in inventory. Mm -hmm. You choose one and then you can design the rest of the watch around it. Case, strap, all that stuff. Online mm -hmm. customizer, we call it the watch builder. And then finally we have pre-built watches where we chose the pocket watch we made it into a wristwatch based on what we thought was cool. If you buy it, we'll ship it tomorrow kind of thing. So those are the three ways we sell watches. Okay. This, what we're about to talk about, is, is what I call convert your watch on our website. Um, and it's about 20% of our business. Um, people send us, we've done hundreds of these. People send us pocket watches, I would say one or two a week at this point. Um, the first thing we do, um, usually we don't see them in person, it's online. So we ask the customer to open the, the front and the back, send us a, a picture of the dial and a picture of the movement. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's hard to open the back. So I actually made a YouTube video um, that's called How to Open a Pocket Watch. Mm -hmm. So you can just Google mm -hmm. that. Um, you can figure out how to open the back. Inside the back, it's going to be hard to see from there. It's hard to see, honestly, in general. But um, you see that little serial number right there? It's like seven or eight digits. 
Yeah, right um, along the that's edge. That's right along the edge. There's a serial number on the movement. And once I have um, basically the, the original maker, so this is a Waltham. Um, Waltham was in uh, Waltham, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Um, they were the second largest watch company back then. Um, once I have the name of the company that made it and that serial number, then I can tell you what size it is, when it was made, um, how many of this pocket watch they made, all that good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And you can find that out yourselves, actually. It's, um, it's called pocketwatchdatabase.com. Mm -hmm. um, we just use that service. It's an online database. You put in the maker, the movement serial number, it'll tell you everything that the world, the internet knows about this pocket watch. Mm -hmm. Um, once we verify that we can, in fact, do it, um, which I can tell you this is definitely possible, this is called a 12 size, um, it's 15 joules, um, and the crown would be at 3 o'clock, um, which is, you know, where it is right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we call that a hunting style case. So that would be different than a lot of Vortec watches. Most of our watches have the crown at 12 o'clock. That's yeah. about where 90% of pocket watches have the crown. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that um, during the trial yep. um, yesterday. That's one of the most distinctive things about our watch, and that's, that's kind of what we focused on a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, this one would be at 3 o'clock because our mission is to preserve American history so we don't alter the mechanism. So wherever the crown is, that's where it stays. Gotcha. Um, so this one would be at 3 o'clock. It's totally possible. So now that I know it's possible, you would pay a deposit, um, and then we would photograph the front and the back of this, upload it into a private version of our watch builder, mm -hmm. and then you can design the rest of it. So you choose if you want a black case or a 3D printed titanium case or mm -hmm. a bronze case like the one on this watch. Um, we have we work with worn and wound for all of our straps. Um, so we have 15 different colors of their mm -hmm. Model 2 premium straps that you can choose from. Um, and you design the watch. Once that watch is designed, then we start working on it. We restore the old movement. So we would take apart all these gears and springs in here, fix it all up, make it work again. Um, and then we would make our custom engineering case um, and then do our quality assurance and send you the watch. The process is about eight to 10 weeks. Okay, okay. So, so, so basically, so that's on the front end and that's everything that you guys do. Yeah. Now, if we kind of jump into what I would eventually see as a customer mm -hmm. when everything is said and done. Yeah. And you have an example here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this, um, you can see we still have the sticker on it from, uh, from trial yesterday. This was exhibit I, um, apparently. And um, I, this is my personal watch. So this is the, the Lancaster 001. Um, mm -hmm. So we named the watch based on where it was originally made. Mm -hmm. Hamilton was in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, Waltham was you know, Waltham, Massachusetts, we call that the Boston, you know, just we try to use the bigger cities mm -hmm, mm -hmm. around there. Um, but this is the Lancaster 001. This is what um, your watch would come in. They all come in a wooden box like this. The box is also made in Fort Collins, Colorado, where our workshop is. Um, we laser cut foam in here. America wasn't assembled, it was built. Our tagline right here on the foam. We can take all this out. Um, every watch comes with a booklet. Um, this came up in, in trial a few times, the booklet yeah. and, you know, the legal disclaimers that we have in here, our warranty that's in here. Um, you know, your, your typical box and papers, all of this comes with. Um, part of the box and papers is an authentic authentication card which tells you the year um, that your watch was made. Mm -hmm. um, mine was made in 1929, so that's in here. I personally sign off on every watch, um, and so does our head watchmaker. Um, and so, you know, you have that kind of quality assurance check. Um, and then we do a certificate and a quality card. So all these are in here as well. And then you got your watch. So this is also a 12 size. You can see the size is similar. Um, 12 size for us is 46 millimeters. Uh, crown is at 12 o'clock on this one. Um, but as you can see, let the, uh, let the viewers kind of see Hamilton, we have, um, uh, an original Hamilton dial, hands and movement. This one made in 1929. Um, this is called the Masterpiece. Uh, Hamilton made 1,000 of these movements wow. in the, the late 20s. Um, the Masterpiece has 23 jewels, is, I mean, just for you to see, highly decorated, um, solid gold gear train, and um, just an amazing piece of history. You have no idea how they made this back then. It's amazing. Um, again, it's my personal watch. Um, so I've, I've worn this for 
almost three years now. Um, bronze case, you can see it patina um, over time. And then we engrave on the back. We can do custom engraving, but we typically can engrave Vortec, Made in USA, American Artisan Series, the serial number, the Lancaster model, etc. So, so. so basically, everything we see here, minus the actual movement and the dial, the hands, that's what Vortec focuses on, and that's what that's kind of your thing. That's yeah. that's your. Yeah, I like to say um, the watch is, is like a museum on the wrist. Everything between the glass is old. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that's true. Everything that, that we made is everything you can touch. So the case, the glass, the crown, the leather, the hardware, the buckle on this, we actually made that in our shop in Colorado mm -hmm. too. Um, this is a, um, a Horween strap um, from um, Hadley Roma. That's one of our options, but we also have the... Uh, the wind-up straps from the wind-up watch shop as well. Okay, but. Um, perfect. Um, one thing I, 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 I'm trying to remember because I think I had mentioned to you before, when someone brings in um, or sends you the watch for a conversion, you guys still send back the case, correct? Yes, yeah, so you would get this original case, um, your chain, all this back. We keep it with your pocket watch the whole time it's in our workshop. Um, and then we put this inside the, the wooden box on its way back to you um, for safekeeping. And um, from talking to a lot of my customers, they, they end up keeping the pocket watch case and all their box and paperwork all together, mm -hmm. um, and then obviously wear their watch. So, okay. um, RT, I, 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 don't, I don't think you could have explained it any better. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's clear what you guys do, um, and I think you guys provide an amazing service to a lot of people who want to take that heirloom and, and actually wear it and, and, and use it. Um, thank you so much for yeah. sitting here and talking with us and kind of explaining the situation you're going through. And uh, just wanna say again, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thanks for having me, appreciate you. And uh, one thing before we head out, where can people um, get in contact with you? What's, a, what's the, what are your outlets? Yeah, Vortec? Um, it's Vortic Watches on Instagram, um, slash Vortic Watches on Facebook, VorticWatches.com. Um, and I'm RT Custer on Instagram. Okay. So um, that's me. Okay. And of course, guys, you can find us on Watch With Us channel on YouTube. You can follow Watch With Us on Instagram as well. Um, and once again, thank you, RT, for explaining the situation. Absolutely. See you next time. See you guys.